Welcome to the Man This Continues podcast. This week, I'm going to be talking to John Borromeo. This guy, he's the chief of staff and had basically does, does, he, there's not a hat he doesn't wear over at Stand Up New York, right up there on 76 and Broadway. Uh, John, I've known John for a couple of years. It's funny because he, um, he, he's always like the funnest guy to talk to. He's always having a great time. He loves comedy. He loves, I think, just the, 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 the juice that comes from live performance, people watching something that he's put together. And uh, I was really excited to talk to him. Uh, I love Stand Up New York. I love coming in. I know a whole bunch of people who are there. It's kind of like my, the cl- it's kind of like my anchor club in New York. It's the place that I like going to hang out. I run into all kinds of people there who I end up getting on doing shows with later. I met Mike Costa there, Josh Johnson, just to name a couple of people. Mark Norman, who comes in all the time. And uh, it's lovely, man. And one of the things I dig about clubs and is it, just hanging out and spending time and getting to know everybody, becoming a regular, seeing people in the neighborhood come in, meeting people, meeting comedians, meeting producers, meeting bookers, meeting all kinds of different people. And John is at the center of a lot of that. He's going to be working on all kinds of novel and unique ideas that he mentions in the show. We couldn't talk about a ton of them because they're pretty cutting edge, but like some of them that he wants to start doing to really build up the Stand Up New York brand. So I wouldn't be surprised if you started hearing more about Stand Up New York in the way that people talk about, you know, the cellar or danger fields or any of that classic New York club stuff. So I was uh, happy that he was able to sit down. The Stand Up New York does a great job helping comedians launch podcasts. We sat down in the Stand Up New York studios and uh and skittish media and produce this podcast albeit on my own equipment and uh and then i ended up you know telling some jokes that night at stand up new york also so uh john borromeo is a unique guy and very funny has a great time on the pod and uh and and has a good story of how we got involved so anyway without further ado uh here is john on the next episode of the madness continues I had a, a, a terrible breakfast this morning. I had a very stale muffin. The muffin was just shitty. It was supposed to be blueberries, but it was just cranberries. It was just disappointing uh, all day. No. All right, cool. I got got it. Okay. I got that great. I got that hot audio, man. <laughs> <laughs> about, your, about your cranberries. John Borromeo, welcome to the Madness Continues podcast, man. Thank you so much, man. It's a pleasure to be on here. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. I um, it's funny because I when I last when I dis, when I I knew I wanted to like sit down and talk with you and stuff, but we were at James's holiday party. Oh yeah, the the bougie James, guy. The bougie. Can I swear on here, by the way? Yeah, you're fine, man. Yeah, it's so bougie. <laughs> the fucking, it's like a full floor. It's like twenty thousand square feet. It was so funny to hear the fucking history hyenas on his podcast because like, <laughs> Giannis Papas is like the fucking hanging out with the guy with a fucking mural on the wall. <laughs> A fucking original Miro? <laughs> yeah. I was like, Jesus, that's exactly. I've been waiting to do that impression this for some <laughs> since he released oh, that fucking. God. Pod. It was so D funny. And fucking uh, uh, what's Jesus? Giannis. Giannis. I can't think yeah. today. Sorry, my mind is like going a million miles. An oh hour. my god, dude. Yeah, you got a lot going on, man. Dude, we got a shit ton going on, man. Yeah. I've been busy hitting the ground running. Twenty twenty has been pretty decent so far. Yeah. Pretty decent. It's been. It's. I feel like it's. I've heard from everybody. They're like, yeah, man, we just hit it, and things are just like working. Working out, man. But it's you know like, what I'm worried about? The other shoot of fucking yeah, That's yeah, what I'm right. worried about. Yeah, you gotta be careful, man. <laughs> yeah, no, we were at we were hanging out at James's holiday party, uh, and I was like I was like, Man, I run into John all the time. And we've been talking I, I for t- a couple years uh, at sure. least a couple years. Sure. And I was like, I've never really sat down with him. normally when I'm in the club I'm like in and then I'm out yeah. going to do open mics or I gotta go fucking do something somewhere. So like I was like, why not let's sit down and, and chill out and stuff. So for the listener, because I have a bunch of people in Chicago, sure, and also weirdly a lot of listenership in like Kingston, Jamaica, and the Russian Federation. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the joke on the pod is that Vlad Putin listens listens in. He's always he's always tuning in. And Presidente Vlad Putin, yeah, uh, Mr. Right on a Putin. fucking white horse. Yeah, 
He's just so <laughs> with his shirt off. Oh yeah, she's so sexy. So sexy. There's a, I'm like, come on, man, lift some weights. <laughs> I know, right? Get a little definition going, right? Definition, dude. <laughs> look like you look like you've been eating popcorn for days. <laughs> um, which in Russian is called pop of corn. <laughs> uh, what a dumb joke. Anyway, uh, so that, no, we were hanging out there, and I was like, yeah, what well, the fuck not? So for people in Chicago, John is the uh, chief of chief of staff. Yeah, yeah, chief of staff. I don't know. I got that fucking title. Title. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for Donnie's st- like, yeah, you gotta be chief of staff. I don't know why Donnie <laughs> sounds like he's from Brooklyn from 1942, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, listen here. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna be the listen, chief of staff. Listen here, Johnny B. You're gonna be the chief of staff. <laughs> hey. I know. It's been crazy. Yeah. That's, that's so funny because. He so sounds nothing like that. No, in real very life. just fine. He's like the chi- chillest guy. Like I feel like he needs an ASMR channel on YouTube, <laughs> where he just he could tune in and hear Donnie just read the lineup for for stand up. For New York. New York. <laughs> <laughs> Let him pop a Xanax and have him talk to you. Holy shit! Oh it my is. god! Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> I could listen to that on repeat. I'd it's so bad. it's so funny too because John, him and John Fadigate like next to each other. Well, they t- they t- their voices are so complimentary. <laughs> Like I feel like I want like yeah. I, I wish I was I wish I was uh, dining at a restaurant and they were both like waiting my table. Right. <laughs> Like, I, would, I would feel so taken care of. It is. It's like <laughs> they should have a morning show. Do you know what I mean? Like one they, of those zoo morning shows. They really should, man. <laughs> they really should. Like the history highness. Yeah. Oh, my God. That podcast is so funny. So like, uh, w- but this was, a, you know, this podcast for me is kind of, I use it as kind of an opportunity to talk with people and, and all this kind of stuff. But like, how did you end up? Getting to be chief of staff at the Stand Up New York, man. What's, sure. your, what's your journey with comedy? My journey with comedy is actually fairly recent. Um, I started in the business only about three years ago. I've been in entertainment. Really? Yeah. That's surprising yeah. only because... Really? <laughs> that's only surprising because you know... so. I feel like you know so many people. I do. I do. I have the luxury that I have been working in entertainment for the last 10 years about. Um, oh, I wow. actually started my career um, in restaurants and hotels, hospitality. Yep. And from hospitality, I went on to events um, and... And um, some of the uh, companies that I've worked for in the past may actually surprise, surprise a lot of people. But I used to work for Halliburton and Schlumberger. What? Uh, yeah. Um, and then I also worked for a uh, public relations company here in New York City where I did events for apparel. So William Rast, which is Justin Timberlake's line. Yeah. I was the champion, um, Sean John. And, Jesus, man. And some, then big, the, some big brands. It is. And the coup de grace behind all that is that I also worked on the exploratory committee for Mitt Romney. What? As well, yes. You Did you really? Yes, I That's did. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, so we did the grassroots campaign. So I've been in events a long time. I've been uh, in public eye stuff for quite a bit. Um, and I got the opportunity. I was living in Houston, and I just missed New York. Yeah. And uh, the opportunity that came. Uh, Another great comedy community, though. It is very good. Houston, yeah, blowing Which up. I wasn't able to tap into, but I'm able to tap back into it. Yeah. Uh, I've, I was just down there with James about a couple months ago in April. Yeah. And then I'll be down there again for Skank Fest. You got to go see Corey Wood when you're Corey down there. Corey Wood. Yeah, yeah. He's okay. a friend of mine from Chicago. He's blown up in Houston because he just moved back. Oh shit! Cool. Yeah, he's really he's been on the pod a number of times. He's a really funny guy. I'd love to go. Yeah, he he is. I don't think he runs it, but he's a member of the secret group. Secret down group there. is great. That's actually where Skankfest is going to be yeah. this year. I yeah, mean, yeah. Um, so I think, really might be, I think he might be on it. I'm know? sure he probably yeah. is. I mean, the, they they love cultivating local talents, and obviously, local talent will be a, will be a draw. Oh yeah. Um, in any place, but yeah, I mean, I left um, Houston just because I missed New York. Had the opportunity to work for a, a PR company and uh, decided to do it. And but something was missing. Yeah. Um, and I had the opportunity to speak with uh, Donnie's brother um, was set up with me. One of his old hands. Yeah, one of his old ones. And um, uh, he's like, yeah, my brother owns a comedy club. And uh, it'd be great if you like you guys had a conversation. So Does I he did. also have that baritone voice? Yeah, he does, no, it's actually a little bit higher. Oh, uh, it's a little funny. more animated, uh, which my is great. My brother owns a comedy Ari's club. Ari's very <laughs> different from his brother Donnie. Um, uh, but it was it was interesting. And um, I will tell you that I was like, a comedy club? I don't want to go to a comedy club. And I ended up going. Yeah. And the one thing resonated with me was I started looking at their lineups. I'm like, wait a second. I know all these names. Why? Because every time I used to travel for work, the one thing that I would always watch on the plane was stand-up specials. Oh, really? On Netflix. That's so fucking cool. So I would see yeah. Christian Finnegan. I was like, oh my gosh, I just watched his Netflix special. I know this guy. Exactly. And it was the, there was this, um, you know, Brendan, you've been in the business a little bit, but I will say that there's this awe 
that I have and I still have to this oh, yeah. day looking at these comedians like these are people that I watch we were talking to Chris I was talking to Chris Gethart uh, yeah. yesterday yeah. and I realized that he was in The Other Guys and then this morning I'm watching uh, The Office and he was in that too was he Chris Gethart was in The Office he was he was like in the last season of The Office oh my god it was great uh, he actually he, 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 he plays uh, Dwight's friend that tries to cap uh, to kneecap um, Oscar oh my god that's so funny so yeah so but it was like, but the one thing about it is what a that unique. He's had such a unique career. It man. really yeah. is the, the the trajectory that he's had in the last couple of years, and he's, now he's moving back to Jersey. Dude, I had a great conversation with him about that. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, it's not on anything, is it? What uh, the conversation you had with him? Just no, 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 no. It was just me, just cool the, at the bar, which yeah. is so cool about being Hanging in the business. The, yeah, it's like people that you looked up to. Like we had Michael Rappaport here the other night. Uh, yeah. yeah, last night, and it's like I remember watching this guy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Michael fucking Rappaport. Exactly, yeah. and he's fucking sitting next. To you, like John, I'll text you next time I'm in town. I love you. I had I have conversations <laughs> with Ari fucking Gold. Yeah. on my phone. <laughs> you know, Jeremy Piven. I I used to watch the shit out of that show when I was yeah, working yeah. in hotels, but. Back to the original question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got involved in comedy because it was something different. Um, I've always been kind of, you know, a, a fan of stand-up comedy. And three years ago, I had the opportunity to come on board and just, honestly, I was just consulting for them. And yeah. within three years, um, I got acclimated to chief of staff. I don't know how, but I did. I mean, I feel like you're a hard, I mean, I get it. You're a hard-working dude. You're, you're. You, I try. You, I, I feel like you respond to to every. I mean, like we we barely knew each other, and I was like messaging you, and you were like messaging yeah. me back. We were trying to work out that shit for Edinburgh. That's right. That's right. Like, well, cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real, man. Yeah, for real. <laughs> oh God, I got drip right now. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, that yeah, it, I think that that's one of the things that I love is like I fucking I was just talking uh, to Mark Norman the other day uh -huh. at the stand, and yeah, in the how was Mark? In the middle of the com yeah. <laughs> Yeah, comedy. he's doing great. Hey, yeah. jump to turn style. He just messaged me. He just messaged me comedy in the ex with the exclamation point on fucking Instagram. <laughs> Love comedy. Mark. Hey, God. You know, I was talking with a gal. And <laughs> anyway, he um, it's funny because for the listener who's not in comedy, that's how he talks in a regular conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. That's how. It, that's just how he sounds. It's these not, are just these are just jokes for you and I, pretty much I at this point. So funny. He's like, he actually just sounds like that in conversation. But I was talking with him, and in the middle of the conversation, I was like, dude, I'm talking to Mark fucking Norman. Yeah. Like, and it's not I've done I've worked with them before like sure. it's it's just funny because I just didn't it's like it hits you you know yeah, that's the one thing is that um, I see a lot of people in this business that they get so haggard by it specifically comedians yeah. and what I notice a lot is that this has been an archaic kind of uh, like uh uh, you know style of how to do business and the one thing about it is, is that you can't lose your twinkle of how cool it is. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm I'm such a huge fan of stuff uh, yeah. and, and, and this business, and I'm in awe for people that can go up on stage and literally work out material, and it's 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 this it's this feeling of pride when I see them get their JFL auditions. Oh yeah, or they get that late night you know spot, and it's it's something that I don't see in a lot of other you know they, they just get so haggard by the whole business and the industry and oh, yeah. comics, but it's also operators as well. It just becomes a money thing for them you well, know because you get you get jaded like you sure get, yeah because you're you're surrounded by i mean i could see it and it's funny because i feel like that's what's i guess unique about you is that you're like you're still excited by it i am and like i am so excited about it yeah and i just feel like because you you see it like i i interviewed mark ridley from the comedy castle in detroit mm -hmm. where i started and i was back there working it uh and sat down and talked with him and he was kind of like and he's like dude i love it like i still love it i still watch every set but mm -hmm. he's like you know I've been in this business for like 40 years. Sure. <laughs> like, sure. Like I've, I, at a certain level, I'm like, look, this is just a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's like any other job. I completely agree with you. I mean, the, uh, I mean, the big question that I've been asking myself in the last couple, I mean, I've been three years here now is what's next. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I mean, Besides becoming a managing partner here for this establishment, this organization, you know, what's the next step? And I think right now what it's about is legacy. Yeah. Um, there is an idea of that, you know, this place has been around since 86. So the next step is what's the branding? Do you know what I mean? Dude, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, I, it's, I just was, it's, I mean, I should not talk about this too much on the pod, but I was having a conversation about this recently because Stand Up New York is such a class, it's a classic stand up brand Thank in, you. in the Thank city. Thank you. And like, I really think that, I mean, it's the same thing is that I, I, I also agree with you that I think that there's a lot that this, that the brand could do, which I think sure. is exciting to think about.
Which and I'll is, just I'll just leave it there because sure. I feel like I probably shouldn't talk about much more than that. I mean, the, uh, at the end of the day is like I I have uh, uh, like anybody that works in any job. I'm like, what's your next step? Do you yeah. know what I mean, yeah. I, I'll be honest. I do other things too. I also do. I also have a. I mean, I am a 10.99 for life. I have uh, <laughs> I have so many other things that I do. I still produce uh, events for um for for companies as well. Yeah. You know, overseas. Um, That's cool. It is cool, but. You know what's cool is coming in and making that hour and a half drive from my house in New Jersey here, yeah. to, here to the Upper West Side, and this takes up ninety percent of my time is twenty percent of my of my yearly income, <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, yeah. You have to you have to have that passion behind it. You yeah. know what I mean? So what do you want to? I mean, what for you? Like, you are you are you leaning into events more? Like, so you got like more of that stuff coming up? Or it's and, it's it's a different thing. I mean, like, it, it you never know. There's so many different crossovers. Comedy's a, comedy has a bubble right now, obviously. Yeah. The great thing about it is, it's like is the that silver age of comedy kind of, or something. Kind of, yeah. I, I completely agree with you. Um, what I'm looking for right now is like, what is going to make comedy clubs different? And one of the big things that we can do with comedy is, you know, we're a venue that literally. What time to shine is eight o'clock to like midnight. Oh yeah. What do you do doing in those dark spaces? You yeah. know, you run open mics, you do things of that nature. But what else can you do? And so that's what I've been kind of opening up to with my experience in events. And you know, if anybody else is working in the comedy field or a venue field, you know that you can utilize your space as something that's different than just four walls of a hotel. Yeah. You know what I mean, how cool is that if you're doing a presentation or you're doing uh, some sort of you know workshop and you're doing it at a comedy club? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of route that we're trying to take. I'm I'm also trying to take a route that's different from necessarily just not stand up comedy. Yeah. You know, I'm a big firm believer and I and I know people are gonna probably hate me or probably get some hate mail on this, but I love music musical comedy. Yeah. I think it is so good. I love people like Jared de Guzman. I love people like Bo Burnham. I love uh, you know, uh you know, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a huge there's a ton of them that are out there. Francis oh, yeah. Ellis is killing it right now, but that different style. It's not just one person standing up at a microphone and saying jokes anymore. It's different. It's performance art, I, but ultimately it is comedy. I feel like I'm so jealous of. I was just talking on the, on this podcast with um a dude who I met in the UK who's a musical comedian, and I'm so jealous of that ability. I have no musical talent. <laughs> And I feel like that. You oh, look like you could pick up a guitar and like totally just play I, some like Coldplay my, or something. Probably because of my beard right now. <laughs> yeah, I can sing Coldplay. <laughs> this is beautiful. This. Is he here in the room? What's going yeah. on? Is Chris Martin here? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. I, I I have no musical talent, man. I really wish I did. Uh, I feel I'm very jealous. I'm envious of people who have that ability because uh, I, I think. I was just, like one of my uh, the guys I started with in Detroit was is J Chris Newberg, mm -hmm. and he has that whole ability and like he can that's his like he'll get up and he'll do I mean he's done recently his like what is top number one Billboard album or whatever uh, that he released uh, was no music at all and like he's a funny guy but sure. like if he's ever on stage and he's like time to really blow this place the roof off this joint he'll just take his guitar out and it's like it, people just it's, he's so funny it's unbelievable i mean listen I, I think i think what we've established ourselves is what is comedy you know obviously you know here's the thing in this day and age of tiktok and youtube and instagram sensations mm -hmm. um you know, I, I do get a lot. I, I do people see see people sneer at sometimes my lineups, mm. um, because we, we there's a mixture in there. Yeah. Um, I will say this: every time that a comic is on our stage, they are always funny. May not be funny to me, but it's funny <laughs> to somebody else. Yeah. Um, and let's be honest, though, if I can't it makes tap, me feel better about bombing here. Yeah, exactly. If you do, a, if, but if I'm doing a show on a Wednesday night of YouTubers, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's packed out. Then guess what? I can still do those experimental shows on yeah. Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, and you know, on Fridays, and and keep my lights open, yeah. so everyone else can enjoy. It. I mean, ultimately, we're we're a business, dude. I mean, I I get it. I get it. I think to my that's what's so weird about. I was I just was having this conversation with some guys in um, uh, b back home is that they're the business is so is your skill set as a comedian now has to be so different from what it was i mean you still gotta be funny on stage ultimately Absolutely. you're like are you funny or not Absolutely. and and like you were saying i mean like there's people who it, this is what's weird about comedy lately is that i think that there was a lot of people have i've been doing this since i was like 16 mm -hmm. and i think that there were a lot of people in the early 2000s who would go to see comedy and they were comedy fans they sure. had been seeing comedy since the 80s or 90s they were new to comedy they knew what stand-up comedy was but then there's all these people now who have gotten on board with people on, they've gotten to know them on TikTok or YouTube or wherever. 
And that's funny to them. Sure. And the people who had been seeing classic comedians constantly go to clubs and they go, I don't, this isn't funny. Sure. But you're like, well, yeah, well, not to you. Like, it's not your cup of tea. And I, I feel like I talk about this a lot. Like, there's a lot of comedians whose specials have come out or people who I've seen do comedy. And I'm like, I get why other people think it's funny, mm-hmm. but it's not just really not my cup of tea. Like, exactly. It's a different world than it used to be. It 10, really is. 10 I years mean, ago. Even, even, even five years ago. Right. It's, ultimately, like, remember how obviously we have the classic club standups, but then we always talked about, you know, here in the New York area, we talked about the Brooklyn scene and the oh, yeah. alt comedy. Yeah. Different. Well, you know, taking somebody like a Martin Urbano who's yeah. done Kimmel and putting him on our stage, do you know what I mean? It does extremely well because it's something different. And I'll be honest, people that are coming to comedy clubs, it, it's no longer just being a novelty thing for them to do at, an, uh, at night. Yeah. It becomes their hangout. I mean, listen, you're dropping $50 yeah. at a club for tickets and two drinks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you, you can do and, the and, same and anywhere you, else. You want something that you're not going to... I mean, like if, you're, if, you wanna see, if you just want to see comedy, you could watch Netflix. Sure. But if you want to see something that you haven't seen before that or people that you know from things that are going to be around, that's why you go to a club. That live experience, there's and nothing it, like it. I get... I, this is exactly... I talked with Mark about this um, on the pod, is that like the people who, people who are, become regulars have the most rewarding experiences. Agreed. Which is, if you show up regularly, you get to know everybody at the club as a as an attendee, as just somebody who comes in, man. People love, comedy clubs will embrace you. Absolutely. You'll know, you'll get to know. I mean, that's kind of kind of like with James, to be honest. Yeah. Like, he, he knows everybody. I mean, he does comedy now, he but does. like, and he's been doing it for a while, but like, he... He he was just was a huge fan. And sure, he was he he was friends with Gary Goldman from seeing Gary all the time yeah. before he was a comedian. Well, he was friends with Norton as well back in high school. Yeah, in high school. How fucking how fucking <laughs> so what weird. a small world. It really is. It's it so really weird. Is. I mean, James has really brought something different. And it's a different perspective, and you know, um, and I want to say that there was a big kind of uh, of, of shift, you know, when James came uh, and came part of this club is that we didn't want to just all we didn't just want to go after the masses we started going after niche groups as well oh, yeah you know what i mean one of the big things that i did when i first started here i was like two two demos that i think are the that 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 spend money is one the asian community yeah and the lgbt plus community totally which when i came here we had nothing for both of them so yeah. guess what within three years yeah, not not in 20 not in 2017 buddy yeah. you better <laughs> better be reaching out to those two groups <laughs> in 2017 i will say this now i mean i've got a i've got a monthly show here which is asian american uh, asian comics and yeah. it sells out every single month yeah. and uh, i mean if you walked in there's a pride flag in here and so we, we really kind of lay on that because you know what? we want people to be comfortable doesn't matter if you're you're from, you know, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, or yeah. you're from the West Village. We want to make sure that you're comfortable and there's somebody on stage that's going to be funny for you. Yeah. So that's what we try to do. Um, the 8 o'clock show will never be like the 10 o'clock show as oh, yeah. well. You know what I mean? Because we want you to sit down in that chair. We want you to say, that was fucking funny. I want to stick around and I want to spend more money. <laughs> do you know what I mean? This is so, I love talking to you about this because you get so excited about I do. all this stuff. Yeah. It, this is what, I think what you dig about events is that there's, there's, there's like, and at, like there's that attention that like that people are watching something happen. They're watching it happen live. Yes. There's like a there's like a, a juice that comes along with that. There's nothing like that. I mean, what, looking out to a showroom on a, like a, on, on a on a busy Saturday night yeah. in July, and just it's hot. It's a little hot, you know, because 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 of the uh, you know the, the New York summer, and it smells a little bit. But people are <laughs> sweating, but they're losing their shit watching somebody like an Artie Fuqua on stage, oh, yeah. or watching James Altucher, or watching Brian Scott McFadden, or Gina Brion. And there's something that you look at, and you're not even looking at the comic. You're just watching the faces of people. Yeah. And I was, uh, I, I made this comment uh, at our holiday party. Uh, you know, I, I, I truly appreciate every single com- comic that comes here because you don't know what's going on in the life of that person. Yeah. They could be here on a New York trip that they just broke up with their girlfriend or their boyfriend and they're feeling kind of down or they just found out that they're about to lose their job but you, but every time you go up there and you make that person laugh you have no idea what that did to their self esteem and how much better they feel about themselves yeah it's a, it's a constant conversation you wonder is comedy selfless or is it selfish because you think I, I love getting the affirmation of like the crowd laughing sure. at something. It's fu- that's amazing. Like when I get comments on this pod and people are like, that was really great. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> that was just me jerking off. Uh, but I feel like there is a I, – I think that getting up on stage and then doing something that makes other people have a great time 
is you can see like you you like one of the I think one of the most satisfying things, and I think for you probably it's also satisfying where people you can see people come in one way and leave a different way. Oh fuck yeah! And I you're like yeah, no idea. We did that. For it's you. an amazing feeling as somebody who has no effect or on anybody's life to see somebody else affect change. That's and so funny. It's it's yeah. so cool. And <laughs> and you know what? I, I genuinely say when I'm getting people out of there, I I I do want you to get the fuck out of there because I got a 10:30 show that needs to get in there. Yeah. But thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. And you know what? Comics, do me a favor. Just Take the compliments. <laughs> take the fucking compliments. <laughs> Brendan, take the compliment. When somebody's like, dude, that was a really funny set. Don't just be like, yeah, it was all right. Just take I do it. That, I do that, John. I do that all the time. I do that all the fucking time. It's like you know me. Like I, I, I feel like I do that all the time. Like Every time I get off stage and I'll even crush and people will be like, oh my God, that was so good. And I'm no. like, yeah, thanks. You got to take it, man. Because, yeah. dude, like, like I said, you have no idea what I'm, that woman I'm, dude, in the front is We're all doing. our worst critics. I get it. I get it. We get off stage and fun. If it, even if it's a decent set and i even if it it's like it's not up to like my perfect standard sure. i'll get off stage and people will be like oh that was pretty good and i'm like no it wasn't like and it, it's such a douche move to make when that's I, the selfish part that is the that's selfish the part. selfish part. absolutely that's the selfish part but you know what it, it's a great thing but you know think about like, these legions of fans that like you know once you make it big like i mean there's nothing better than i've like reading in a podcast as a uh, comments and people being like hey listen i was going through a tough time and this really kind of helped me yeah well, it's amazing yeah you know and 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 that's the one thing is like it can be very selfish but this this is so rewarding when it when it can be selfless you know what i mean yeah that you're putting yourself out there there's been many times that in my own personal life that i have uh i have I, i've 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 kind of uh uh, found that a comics bit is kind of speaking directly to me. Yeah. And when that happens, and I've had some some breakthroughs in the last couple of days without any, you know, drugs or you know, or, or going to therapy. That yeah. I've listened to something and I'm like, huh, that's exactly like me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there was a simple. I'll tell. I'll give you this most simplest thing. Somebody had a bit the other day. His name is. Uh, you know what? I'm not even gonna say his name. But he has a bit that specifically says that people that rewatch The Office. <laughs> are just scared huh. that they don't want to watch anything new and I was like you know what you're absolutely fucking right that day that night actually I went and I was like you know what no more office no more I'm going to watch something else I think there's something true about it that's what I dig about I think that's what I like about hanging out with comics like cuz I I think that I think that if you I mean look you you love hanging out with comics you wouldn't you wouldn't Oh I hate it completely no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be like yeah you wouldn't have Oh like, god you guys are so poor I pay for everything <laughs> I mean that's probably true That's probably true with your with your 20% of your income from 90% of your time Yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. That's why it's only There's 20. nothing worse than to be like hey you guys want to go to this bar and they're fucking looking at the menu and be like no I can't go there How I'm much like, is you a know PBR what? I'll buy first round how much, how much is a PBR Yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> No this doesn't have a PBR this is a bar at a hotel <laughs> Oh my god that's so funny I like I used to you know like I, I, I like, be, you know, super best friends with fucking Bill Petit. Uh -huh. And uh, we used to hang out at Burke and Wells around the corner. Yeah. And every time oh, we'd go there, I'd be like piece. counting. I know, right? What the fuck, right? Dude, at Upper West Side. That place, is, uh, that place was amazing. It was great, dude. They had that fucking hidden room. Yeah, and, like, all that room? shit. So dope. It, it was, was amazing. So I can't believe it. Uh, oh, Jesus. To your listeners, this is a place on 79th uh, that was, uh, it was actually an Australian bar. Unbelievable. It was really great. And Kangaroo then it shut burger. Down. Yeah. Fucking Such great cool drinks. shit over there. Yeah. Of, of all places, the Upper West Side. Is anything is anything even in that place yet? No. <laughs> dude, nothing. It's like, it's so crazy. Like, the originals will stay here. Zaybar's is still always going to be here. Zaybar's probably owns their building. Building. That's I, probably probably why. probably, yeah. but I will say this: like uh, you know, Upper West Side, like go and support local comedy wherever you are, because like this is how people survive. And you know, luckily, or podcasts or podcasts. Patreon link will be in the show notes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bio. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the end of the podcast. You went for the plugs. I love I it. <laughs> I'm never gonna miss an opportunity, man. But yeah, just go support local comedy. But like, yeah, hanging out with comics is fun-ish. Well, I mean, one of the reasons I yeah, that's funny that you did that. I because I it's it. Let me put it this way: it's not like you're not. It's not watching The Office. It's it's fucking you. you one of the reasons I like hanging out with comics so much is because everybody speaks truth to each other a lot. They're not. They're not just into fucking saying things because they sound and feel good. Sure. And and they're and and a lot of those truths are funny. I think. I can see that sometimes. Here's the difference. I'm not a comedian. 
Yeah. I am on the other That's side. That's a good point. Of That's a good point. So on my side. You don't have the darkness inside no, of you. There's in a the lot same of people way. that they'll, they'll like, I feel like when people have conversations with me, they're just trying to run bits. Oh, that's probably true. It's annoying. People, well, out of everybody in this whole fucking club, of course they run bits. Yeah, for they're you. gonna try. I mean, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a handful of friends that I, I, I work, I, 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 I'm friends with. Like, um, Mike Lasher uh, was a good friend of mine. He's a comedian. Yeah. Jeff Sheen, Jeff R. Curry, Jeff yeah. Comstock, Matt Backus. These are, we're, yeah. we call ourselves the Belgian boys. Yeah, you know what I mean. We hang out all the time, but they know like they're not running bits by me. Yeah, but. If we let one more person into it, yeah, I can hear it and you can literally start hearing that shit. And they'll and they'll call it out, be like, "Yo, don't be trying to fucking yeah. run bitch by John right now. He doesn't That's give so a fuck." <laughs> do you, why do you guys call yourselves the Belgian boys? So our buddy works for New Belgium, and ah, um, right. Greg affectionately, when we all got together because we always drink New Belgium, be like, "Ah, the Belgian boys are here." And That's I'm like, great. Oh, great. So it kind of stuck, and it's actually a thing on our menu now. <laughs> That's that's funny. I I um I yeah I know Jeff and Jeff from back in Chicago, yeah. man. I hardly I barely see either of them. Actually, the only place I see them now that I'm thinking about it is here at Stand Up New York. Well, our curry is in Chicago now, and then Sheeny Boy is actually doing a show for me down uh, at this private event that I'm uh, in a little bit. So. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, what so a I'm funny what a funny dude. small world, right? Yeah, funny. What I mean, like comedy is not that huge of a of a, of a, of a space, man. I mean, it like, really isn't. You got a couple of thousand, a few, a couple thousand comics in the entire country. You sure. Think? And then, like, Good if ones. you're, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and then, if you've got, you know, you think, you think about, you know, if you're operating at a certain level, you're gonna run into a whole bunch of these guys, like, which is amazing. And that's, I mean, like, you look at somebody like a Nikki Glazer, yeah, uh, and seeing, you know, we have a great picture of her sitting down next to Pete Davidson. Yeah, this is circa like six, seven years ago at the front porch, uh, the front over there, and then just to see where they've kind of progressed from there. Oh, totally. And then not only that, is seeing the other things like Ian Fidens, who's on You Up with Nikki Glaser. Oh, yeah, And yep. then Tom Takar, who is on You Up. And like these people that are just like, and mind you, these are the, I said two names like Ian Fidens and Tom Takar, who are now like standards oh, yeah. at the cellar. Yeah, and it's funny to think about that because I just, like Tom, like I would talk with Tom on Facebook yeah. like a while ago. And then you're like, wow, these guys are like going. And same thing with Ian is running, I ran into him at a show at a, a Chuck in Chicago. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're just crushing it right yeah. now, which is great. And like, that's that new wave. I'm gonna be one of these motherfuckers. There you go, it. baby. Say it. Put out in the inner universe. Put that on the vision board. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All my, my vision board is just uh, photos of larger dicks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man. Like, I, 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 I'm. I, I re- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch. I was like, it was like, it was like one of those right. things that like registered. I'm like, glaze oh, okay. right past it. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, man. No, uh, I mean, even with this, like, uh, you know, I think we were talking about Matt Broussard, who's, uh, yeah. you're about to do some shit with. Yeah, you know? about a couple minutes, actually. Five minutes, I gotta get upstairs, but yeah. Um, uh, Matt has just been killing it. I mean, there's dude, nothing really like has, it. man. I mean, he's like, he's, you know, we need young, handsome white dudes. We need a, absolutely. Rep. We need a, I mean, in, 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 in honor of Black History Month, we need just white. <laughs> Straight males up on stage, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I've always said that. Uh, that's so funny. He's a. I mean, what, it's funny. It's. I love him because his his whole act and his whole persona is so good. Because you want, he knows that you want to hate him. Yeah. And, like from the beginning. Resting rich face. Yeah. <laughs> He's so funny, man. He and is great, whole, and it's. But you know, you know, it's awesome to see is that somebody like. Um, we have another comedian here. His name is Chris Barnes. He was an intern for us. Yeah. He's the one that was pushing Matthew Broussard here, and then finally, our booker at the time, Candy, was like, "Yeah, we'll give him some spots." He's been crushing it. Now he's one of my closers here, and he's done a lot of events for us. He's yeah. done a lot of, uh, you know, shows for us. But else, he's been working at Skittish Media. But like seeing him, and then watching him on Jimmy Fallon, and and knowing that he worked all that material out and like, you know, and obviously in New York, you can see it. You can see if you're down at the Grizzly Pair that they're working something out. Or, oh, yeah. You know, Two Boots or a Pine Box. And all of a sudden you see it live on your uh, on your television. I, it's still like, I, I still get tingles. We had Jay Jordan, who literally, I remember watching him for the first time and I, he won this festival that I was judging. And then skip ahead to now that he was just on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon and he had his party here and there's this great feeling of like you know like this camaraderie and that's what I want to see more of in yeah. our business and I, and especially in New York where you know you know lines have been drawn obviously the whole Ari shit the last couple of weeks you yeah, know? yeah people have been drawing battle lines um, the woke comedy versus you know the old school kind of comedy yep. um, I'd like to see a little bit more togetherness do you know what I mean yeah I think it would be really cool I think that there's definitely it doesn't matter what the comedy scene is it feels like there's definitely a weird kind of like people are 
you know, everybody just wants to be liked. Everybody wants to wants mm -hmm. wants to get an audience. Everybody wants to get some attention. Everybody wants to get some opportunities. And it's kind of weird because I feel like we're entering an era now where like you create your own opportunities sure. and you can, and that's really the standard, but like, it's not a competition that's so evil. I feel like it's, it's people, it's really good to support people. Even if you don't, I mean like, even if you don't love everything they do, like sure. even if you don't, even if you're like, look, I'm not the biggest fan of this guy or this, or this woman or, or them yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, I can recognize that you're fucking working and you got an audience. Like it's not a big deal. Respect. Back, man exactly. like we're all out here grinding nobody gets into doing stand-up because everything is going great sure so like Absolutely. let's let's all recognize that we're all wounded people <laughs> sure and I, I i enjoy watching your pain on stage guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, this feels like a good place to wrap it up brother uh well where can people follow you john uh they can follow me at at boromeo b-o-r-e-a-m-a-y-o on all social media platforms um you know but follow us at the club i mean i don't really care about myself but go to Stand up NY and uh, just follow that. We do some cool stuff. Uh, we were closed for the Super Bowl, but we were just shooting memes out all day. That's hilarious. Um, but you know, we, we get some cool drop ins. We had Rappaport last night. Dude, you had fucking Chris Rock not long ago. Chris Rock is, you know, he'll, he'll swing by. We just wish him a happy birthday uh, recently. But then we get people like Jack Whitehall, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and, his, and his dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, great show. Great show. But yeah, we're, we're doing some cool things and, you know, we're excited for a new 2020, uh, for a new year. And obviously, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. But things are good now, so while you can, come on by. <laughs> you should, and you really should. I feel like you guys have a great, such a great room, and Thank it's you. like it's so fun to do, man. The sense of space back there is so good. I appreciate like the, it, and it's a classic room. I mean, if you're a comedian, when a comedian says that, you know what I mean. That that speaks volumes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it, it, there's nothing like it um, when you're looking out. I mean, I've. I've I, I I've walked on that stage and walked out and saw what you guys have saw empty rooms obviously, <laughs> but there's nothing like seeing like I can only imagine what that feels like up there. And well, I I think that you guys have such a cool room because it feels like the sense of space you get when you're on stage, and it's almost the perfect it's almost the perfect comedy room in the sense that you you can I can feel and kind of see the audience mm -hmm. enough that and it's not like we're not it, you can because when you're on stage you want to have a relationship. With the audience, and you can see them in such a way here that I feel is really conducive to just to, to connecting with them. Yeah, and yeah. like I feel that's probably why part of the I mean part of what's so fun to come to this club is just being in the audience because it feels like depending on where you're sitting, it feels a lot of the time like the like whoever's on stage is just talking to you. Yeah, and if that in sense of intimacy that comes along with the space because it's not a huge room. And it's, but it's big enough. You know what I mean? Sure. It's not like you don't feel like you're all on top of each other. Well, Brendan, thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate it. And I invite any of your, uh, you know, listeners to come out. And if you're out here in New York City, we'd love to see you stop by. Do you know what I mean? Brendan, next time you're in town, obviously. I'm, I'm live here now, man. Oh, you're, fucking, you're here fucking, now. Fucking here now, dude. Hell yeah, baby. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I'm, what are you doing tonight? You want to do a five minute spot? Sure, dude. All right. Let's, you're in. We'll get, all right, five man. Five minute spot tonight. Pachow! All right. Thanks, John. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to the Madness Continues podcast. Once again, this is Brendan Lemon. If you liked what you listened to, please take a minute to like, to subscribe, to give us a rating. It really does mean a difference. I say us like there's more than one person doing this. Uh, it's just me, everybody. So every little bit of support you can lend would be really appreciated by me. If you want to share this podcast, it would really, really, really mean a lot to me. I hope you come back. I hope you listen and check out the other podcast I produce, Funny Planet, where we talk to different comedians from all over the world about what they're doing and how they are funny in their own cultures. You can learn a thing or two and you'll have a laugh too. Anyway, take care. Take it easy. We'll see you here next time. <laughs>